and welcome back to our uh, cooking vlog that we do, or we try to do every week. Um, this week we've got something really, really quick and simple to make. So it's just, you're going to spend more time peeling your potatoes than you are going to actually be making your, your, uh, your meal itself. Anyway, so what I thought I'd do, I'll just show you around the kitchen that we had fitted a couple of months ago. Because on the house tour that we did, it had the old kitchen in. So I just thought I'll uh, show you around the new one and uh, let you know what it looks like and what it does. Anyway, I'm having a hot flush. I don't look like I'm having a hot flush. I think what it is, because when I work at the bakery or where I'm at, it's absolutely freezing cold all day. Then I come home and the house is nice and warm and, yeah, get all red cheeks. Anyway, so this is the kitchen. So this is the old fridge that we used to have uh, in the corner over there. So we've kept that one, so now we've actually got two fridges and two freezers. Because this here is there's an integrated, integrated freezer. Um, we've got a single oven here, which is pretty big actually. I do find them to be bigger than the old oven that we used to have. We can get bigger trays in it, which is really handy for us. Uh, and we've got two of those, got one there. Uh, cupboard space, drawers, more cupboards. Uh, cutlery drawer, one there. Utensils in that one. Few bits and bobs in that one. Uh, we've got more cupboards along here. The saviour of the day, the dishwasher. This poor old girl must go two or three times a day. Brilliant. Uh, there's the other oven. More drawers, more cupboards. Uh, this is a integrated fridge. Quite a big one. And then we've got the big island in the middle and in that we've got uh, two induction hobs we've put side by side we've got the two because sometimes we found with the old big cooker we had we did use more than one hobs worth you know so we've got the two together which is really nice uh, this is the for the bin we've got a recycling one there another one there just for your general rubbish uh, and these little pop-up plug socket things with a USB port in it uh, and then we've got oh this this is my favourite one of my favourite things this is massive cutlery drawer and then we've got here we've got some deep sided pan drawers so you can get loads in them and then there's another one underneath there's Sue's favourite things the slow pots she loves them and what else have we got that's just a cupboard more cupboards along the corners, along the sides, more cupboards, and then more bar, sto more bar stools, and then under here there's even more cupboards. We've got another one, two, three, four cupboard space. Uh, so generally we just sort of keep, what do we keep under here? All sorts of stuff. Wine glasses, coffee machines. How many people buy a coffee machine like that? and then just leave it in the cupboard and never use it. We're, we are guilty of that, definitely. And we've got uh, a cooker tap. We were bumming and iron whether to get one of these to start with, but we did, and I, do you know what? I'm so glad we've gone with it because it's just brilliant. Time it saves, it's great. You double click, twist it, and you've got boiling hot water, so there's your cup of tea, first thing in the morning, no waiting around for the kettle. And you know, I find, I think it's a lot safer than a, a kettle myself, because you can't pull the tap off, you can't pull the tap onto a child, it's, you know, it's water on demand as much as what you want. You know, if a child was to pull the wire of a kettle and the whole kettle tip on them, that's a full, you know, a couple of litres of boiling water all over them, isn't it? With this, it's just, it's fixed, it doesn't go anywhere. And it's quite, well, it's very safe, you know, this double click thing, you've got to do it quick and then turn it. You can't just do one, two, and then turn it. It's, it won't work. You've got to be a lot quicker than that. And that's about it, really. That's the kitchen. Oh, that was it. Uh, and then we've got this, I don't even know what you call it, like an island in the sky. Look at that, there's a light bulb gone already. With the extractor, and that's, uh, me and Chloe built that. And then the plasterer came along and finished it off for us. So that has the extractor in it, which you work with a remote control. 
So there's the lights come on and then you can turn the extractor on itself with the remote control. So that's, uh, yeah, it's quite nice is that because you wouldn't want to try and reach up there to turn it on. It's about probably eight foot high up there. And then there was just the lighting that we've got in the kitchen. So we've got the, the four main ones on on the extractor itself and then we can turn the ones on the back wall and then the ones just on the island itself or we can turn them all on so that's it that's our new kitchen all done so anyway let's get on with the cooking and see what we'll make it tonight okay so what we're going to make today is just a very simple potato bake it can be a vegetarian one if you want it to be or you can uh, I'm, I've got a bit of gammon left over from the weekend from Sunday so I'm going to uh, chop that up and put that in so we need, well for us, for our big family, we're going to use about 3 kilos of uh, potatoes which actually we're on offer as a pound a bag for the minute, pound for 2 kilos isn't so bad is it? Uh, so yeah, they just need only peeling and then chopping into small dice Okay, so that's my uh, potatoes peeled, mostly chopped up, I'll just finish chopping them up uh, and get them in the, in the roasting tray <clears throat> it's just so simple this one to make it really I think that you'll spend more time peeling your spuds than you will actually making the you know the the tea itself uh, so that's one right so that's all they're in they're all chucked in no fussing with this recipe, it's just a case of chop it up and chuck it in. Okay, so broccoli, don't waste the stalks, chuck them in as well, they taste just as good. Okay, with the broccoli, again, there's no, no rules on however you want to chop it up. Just in it goes. Big chunks, little chunks, doesn't matter, in it goes. Onion. I've peeled the onion ready this week, because that one last week it just did not want to peel. And it was a killer on my eyes, it was an absolute nightmare. Onion, just spread it all over. I can say onion because the kids aren't here, they're all there. Uh, they're off, off doing their own thing somewhere around the house so they don't know it's in yet. Okay, garlic. If you haven't got a garlic press, just chop it up as fine as you can. Do that, just cut it into long strips. Tiny little cubes. And then with the edge of your knife, just sort of crush it. There you go, that's it. Okay, so, so far we've got in there the broccoli, potatoes, onions, garlic. Uh, I'm going to add some, some leftover gammon from the weekend. If you're vegetarian, obviously don't put this in. But, you know, it's up to you. What, put, it, put in it whatever you like. Uh, I don't think it works so well with any leftover beef. It'll, might work with chicken, in fact it probably would work quite well with chicken. So that I'm just going to chop up again into little bits. In a minute <clears throat> I'll try and show you, because I can make them quite good with a knife chopping stuff up, I'll show you how you can do it. So you can do it quick and you don't chop your fingers off. Uh, I'll, I'll do it with a carrot in a minute, I'll show you. And that goes. There's not a lot of gammon there, but it's just a little bit, to, just to use it up, you know, rather than throw it away. Oh, that's a little more flavour as well. Okay, right, next thing. I've got here, what is it, about a pint, something like that, of uh, cream. Oh. Okay, so that's everything in there nearly. Just the chicken stock to go in. So. 
And I'm putting, I'm gonna, do you know what? I think I'm gonna put three in for all this. There's quite a lot of potatoes there. We don't, as a family, we don't generally add salt to our cooking. Just purely because, you know, the, the kids now, the food that they can get when they're at school, when they're out, it's got enough added salt to, in it, hasn't it, already? So, we just do our little bit by trying not to add any, any more to their diet that they don't really need to be eating, so. Just an extra stock cube in it goes. Pull that in. So I've probably got there mm, about half a pint of water, and then all that cream. There's no set recipe. Just play it by, you know, add a bit. When it's baking, if you find it's drying up a bit, just add a little bit more water. Okay, right. Okay, those. That's it, done. All we need now, a bit of tin foil over the top, in the oven, which I'm gonna have at 180. Uh, and then I'll just bake it, no idea for how long, I'll let you know I'll do it for when, when I take it out and it's ready. But 10 minutes just before it's ready, I'll take the tin foil off, load of grated cheese on the top, uh, and then give it another 10 minutes just to, you know, go nice and crispy on the top. Then that's it. Till you're done. Okay, so I said I'd give you a quick, I'll show you how to uh, chop a carrot up really quick without taking your fingers off. It's got a bit noisier in here, the kids have all turned up because they're, uh, well, they're here. They've all come out of the hide. Anyway, first, peel your carrot. What's that? Top and tail it. Right. That side, that part of the knife there, needs to run up and down here on your fingers. So just, your fingernail, that part is touching the carrot, and then run, listen to, can you hear them? That's Phoebe making all the racket. And then run the knife up and down. So all you're doing with the knife is that this part here doesn't actually leave the, the chopping board. So it's just up and down. And as long as these fingers here can feel the knife, you're not gonna chop the ends of your fingers off. Don't do it like that, because you will. You'll lose the end of your fingers. It's just up and down. Start off slow, we'll soon get the knack of it, and then. That's it. That's ready. Look at this view. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's taken it. It actually took quite a bit longer than I was expecting. It's taken a good hour. So I got a bit bored waiting. So I've cracked the heat up a bit. I turned it up to about just over 200. Left the uh, tin foil on. Like I said, the last 10 minutes. Take the tin foil off. The cheese on top. Back in the oven. There you go. Anyway, let me know what yours turn out like if you do try it and let me know what you think. Well, that's it. Oh, before I go, it works out 40p a portion for everyone, for everybody, which I don't think is bad, is it? 40p. That's not including the ham. I'm, I'm having that as a freebie because it was left over from Sunday. So there we go, 40p a portion.